Spet Snaz Brothers. Spet <laughs> Snaz. <laughs> so uh, here we are driving in a state park. Um, we we, we want to make a point though, Der Derek. What do we do when we see people in the middle of the road? When we see people in the middle of the road, we. Snipe them down. Women run at our car. You just hit them with with door. It makes very good. It's their fault. It's, it's okay. total normal. Yes, it's what we do back in motherland. Very if good. If we see someone passing us right, oh, we have to turn right. Oh no, <laughs> or you go left. We don't listen to rules. Can I go straight? Oh look, there's parking right here. This is oh, good. Park. Oh, beach trail. Beach trail. Beach trail. Restroom. This is us. Beach. beach. I go to beach. Go to be trail. People the beach. in the middle of road in Russia. Very bad. Yes, we make point. Hey everybody, Joel Hansen here. Today we are at Takiro's in, where are we at? San Juan. In San Juan Capistrano, California. Here to do their big chupacabra enchilada challenge. So this challenge has been around for a while. Um, I know quite a few years have done it. Um, I'm, I'm just gonna take my time. I'm gonna try some uh, authentic, more kind of Mexican cuisine as we are down here in California. Very nice influence. Uh, definitely it's also this area as well. So for this challenge, a six pound enchilada uh, consisting of different meats, you have a whole bunch of beans, Mexican rice, toppings, the list goes on. So it sounds really good, super excited. We're gonna have 30 minutes to do it, if not, it's be about 30 bucks. So let's go see what we can do and let's eat. Yeah. Alright everyone, so here we are with the big chupacabra challenge. So multiple enchiladas, a whack of Mexican rice, and then beans. It's pretty big and it's very heavy, so I'm gonna rely on some music because why not? And uh, I guess we're gonna get started here in 30 minutes. So if we start count of five, four, three, two, and one, let's eat. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video and what I consider to be my first enchilada challenge. Theoretically, when I was in Florida, we did what was called an enchilada challenge. However, the gentleman I was with very clearly and distinctly told me that that was not a real enchilada. That was like a burrito that we did. So an enchilada, what I have learned, is essentially kind of like burritos smothered in like sauces and stuff. So here we had it being smothered in like refried beans, pico de gallo, guacamole, I believe there's sour cream, um, just a whole other kind of like vegetables and sauces, like red sauce on it as well. I guess like, I don't know how to describe it with this red kind of spicy sauce. I guess that's also quite a Mexican thing. And this was definitely like a very authentic Mexican restaurant. Everybody in there was very much speaking Spanish. People spoke very little English. And just the area, this uh, Capistrano area is like such, like everything, all the signs, all the businesses, everything is written in Spanish. All this, like the signs, it, like it's, it's pretty impressive to be honest with you. Um, so definitely like if this is called, you know, they have Chinatown, this is definitely like a Mexican area or Spanish area, I should say. Um, this place is also only about, uh, maybe an hour and a half, maybe an hour away from the Mexican border, two hours max. So again, very notably why you have such a strong Mexican influence in the area. I can tell there's some hot sauce in here or something. It's very spicy. A little spicy, please. Bring it in my face. A minute and a half in. Thank you. Shout out to Blaine. Sure. It's awesome. So being in Canada, at least in the circles that I run in, I don't normally get too much exposure to what I would call like authentic Mexican cuisine. So this was kind of a cool experience, a nice taste. Um, everything was tasting pretty good. I would say what I found uh, interesting, and again, don't know if this is just like traditionally with Mexican cuisine or just this one dish. It wasn't like, it was obviously flavored, like very fresh, uh, like it was flavored through a lot of different ingredients, but it wasn't flavored like through a lot of like salt if that makes sense Like there wasn't a lot of like salt in that kind of spice Which like in North American or at least in the Mexican food we get in Canada. It's very much like salt heavy and Forward spices like in that regard and this was not that this was more like a uh, less salty more kind of gentle spices relying more i guess on like the onions the probably cilantro just the general flavors uh tomatoes etc in general so i thought that was like 
a neat observation. And again, I don't know if that is just this dish, but actually now that I kind of reflect on it, a lot of the other, I'll say kind of more again, authentic um, Mexican other items I had in California, no other Mexican food challenges, unfortunately, or I should say authentic Mexican food challenges, um, but definitely went to a couple places that were like noted for Mexican tacos, um, kind of like street tacos, etc., like very famous for around the San Diego area. And now that I think back again, I'd say kind of the same thing. They're not relying on salt um, and that kind of spice, but more just like general flavors, the salsas, whatever. I'm um, definitely a little bit of heat to this challenge. The red sauce or whatever was on it was quite spicy. It was definitely burning kind of the outside around my mouth. Um, also, this was not my first challenge of the day. This is my second challenge of the day. So I was quite full. And this challenge was not easy because of that. I will say, so when you saw the challenge in the dish, it was like, oh, it's not that big. But then you pick it up and you go, holy jump it, it is that big. Just because, if you, have, if you have to understand, like that whole thing was basically filled with liquids and sauces up to the line where you saw. So it's just very moist, which was a good part, but just very dense very heavy because of all that moisture with it. Um, you did have a choice of meats. I chose like chicken and steak or beef or whatever it was. Um, they, you know, it's kind of two enchiladas in there, I believe, at least two. And I just said kind of do half and half. Um, so that everybody, that's pretty much the rundown on the challenge. So if you're ever in the area, definitely it's very authentic. Um, I would recommend checking it out. And if not this location specifically, I would recommend just kind of checking out some authentic kind of Mexican cuisine if you're ever in the Southern California area and or, well, anywhere. Papi, get us get About five minutes in, uh, fish and enchiladas gone. Just a bit of enchilada left, rice and beans. Because yes, it is quite different from what I'll call North American more non-authentic Mexican food, if that makes sense. But everybody, I'll let you enjoy the rest of the video. Let's see what happens and uh, let's go.
a lot of food. <laughs> Gotta keep it going. Nine and a half minutes, I don't have much left. Woo! Well done. Is that done? Woo! All right, so I finished. Somewhere around 10 minutes, 20 seconds. Woo, that's a lot of food. It's tasty. It was a lot of food. I think I need to take a nap now. Hi everybody, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Definitely would recommend coming by this place. Really cool location. Great food, great staff. And everybody, until next time, say happy, healthy, hungry. Excuse me, I'm happy eating. <laughs> oh my God, I'm covered in. Yeah. Blaine, come on, bro. No, I'm just kidding. No, I was gonna say what? I don't know, I'm looking at That's right now. What's up, y'all? We're at a uh, brewery called Carl Strauss, and we're literally like in the brewery. Like, look how big these vats of fermenting stuff are. These are 240 barrels, eh? 240 barrels, no big deal. 31 gallons. One barrel. So, so it's a lot of beer. So it's thousands. Thousands and thousands. Uh, chemicals. Blame. Brew beer, it's like brewing coffee. It's very stark. You know, you have your hops, your raw ingredients, and whatnot. Boil the beer. Put it through the heat exchanger. It's called a, a knockout right here. You knock it out and then it goes directly into one of these fermentation tanks. Uh, That's a lot of beer.